Good morning. If I can have everyone now take their seats so we can begin our program. My name is Anthony Seibert. I am the chair of the Inland Empire Multiple Myeloma Support Group. I'm so pleased that you all can make it on this Saturday, most well, beautiful Saturday and hot morning. We have a quick program for you today. We will have three presentations. We'll have a pharmacist, we'll have a nurse practitioner, and we will have a congressman speak to you on issues pertaining uh, to myeloma and for your education and any questions that you may have. So, seeing that we do have a very tight schedule, we're going to begin right away. I'm just going to make a few brief announcements and then we'll get, we'll get going. As you all know, uh, you should right now, we're having a garage sale graciously being put on by Suzanne. Suzanne, will you stand up? The garage sale will be on September 14th at her house. Uh, I have sent out an email, the address and everything, and the flyer sent out twice. I'll be, just keep on sending it out and putting it in the newsletter uh, from 7 a.m. until everything is sold. She is going to donate all proceeds to our uh, fundraising efforts. Now today, as I stated, we would like if you brought any items, uh, then please see Suzanne so after the meeting she can collect them. We have uh, two pickup trucks for any large items. I hope people did bring things. That's what we've been really pushing for these items so that uh, we can have a successful garage sale. And if you have any questions, of course, you can see Suzanne uh, too about it. Uh, just a reminder, you're not going to the back room behind here where we store our refreshments. Uh, that door is closed and we appreciate it because there was some problems in our past meetings. So it's just either I or people in the steering committee that should be going back there. From now on, we were going to be making our telephone calls to you no later than the Tuesday of the week that we have the speakers. And this is because we need to get an accurate lunch count so that we are on target. Also, when you RSVP, when I send out the announcement, please, if you get a timely manner, can you send a quick email whether you are going or not. Yeah, I would appreciate that. That way, I can get word to the telephone committee, and then they will uh, not have to call you if you are coming or not coming. And that helps us as, as well. But the more, the more time you give our announce, your RSVP is, is, is better for us because our supplier needs like anywhere from two to three business days to work, maybe even more to get the order up and running. Our lunch break is going to be at 11 o'clock right after our first speaker. It'll be real quick. We'll have the lunches in the back table over there so you can get your lunch. And while you're doing it, we'll still have our speakers going um, presenting because of, of the tight schedule. The last announcement I have, and then we'll get started, is a very big announcement. And it is one that I will cover in the newsletter that will be coming to you probably the next week, at least before the month is out. And it's that our co-chair uh, who are, and our co-founder since we started in 2005, Tom Corbett. As you know, Tom Corbett was the co-founder with, um, with Jim McCullough, who passed away shortly thereafter. And then, um, I'm sorry, my mind slips. This, who was the second? Valerie. Valerie. Valerie, thank you. I don't know how, but I do. Valerie Stevens was the second co-sponsor working with Tom uh, up until recently, until uh, 2011, when she passed away. We went, as they say, dark, and then we had no more meetings after her death until we resumed in January of 2012. And I have been a co-chair with Tom since that time. Tom has made the decision to step down from being co-chair. Uh, he will still be involved with the committee. He will still be offering input. And he uh, feels that uh, you know the, this group is strong and continues to grow, and he would like to be part of that. But he, uh, and he has an announcement, a statement, that I will put in its entirety uh, in the newsletter. But I wanted to make that announcement to you. So uh, 
when you see now anything from me, you'll see that uh, I'll just say I'm the chair. But we will discuss this further along in terms of having another co-chair in the future because what I'm trying to get going is the fact that no matter what happens to a chair, co-chair, steering committee, as long as we have a strong organization and we have a strong setup, then this will continue. Because if, as my own patients and caregivers, you understand that our situation changes day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And that's just the nature of our disease, unfortunately, until it becomes actually a chronic disease, which hopefully very, very soon that will happen. Also, I will be handing out these cards from the IMF dealing with the Cancer Drug Coverage Parity Act. I would like each one of you, if you have not already, to please fill it out so that we can get it uh, to your representatives so that we can get this passed in the, um, the House and the House of Representatives in the Senate. Uh, this is the federal level bill that has been introduced. So I would appreciate your support in that. Well, without further ado, we will get started. We are very pleased and honored to have Sandra Garcia, who is a pharmacist from, what is the company? Diplomat. Diplomat Ph Specialty Pharmacy. And she's going to talk about various issues that uh, relate to pharmacy and how it affect uh, cancer patients. So uh, if you have any questions, of course, uh, she will allow you to answer those uh, during your presentation. So let's give a warm welcome for Sandra. Um, 
So this is just a friendly reminder to be in constant contact with your pharmacy and your pharmacist. It probably is a good rule of thumb to give us about a week advance notice when you're getting ready to run out of the medication, just on the off chance that you don't have a refill. It gives us time to contact the doctor, it gives the doctor time to get back to us, and it makes life a whole lot easier and lowers the stress level for everyone concerned. So, again, good rule of thumb, give us about a week. So effective communication among doctors and patients and pharmacists leads to better decisions about therapy and helps to avoid problems. Um, at this point, I'd like to take any really quick questions anybody may have about this part of the presentation. Yes? Do you have any information on like specialty pharmacies? Well, we are a specialty pharmacy at oh, Diplomat, yes. <laughs> With Revlimid, it becomes a little bit more of an issue because of all of the authorization numbers and confirmation numbers that everyone has to get, so it gets a little trickier. And then every month, you have to get that phone call, with that consultation, that checklist of things that you know already, but you have to do it every month. Um, probably, again, like I said, the only thing would be make sure that you're at least calling a week before you need it so that all of that process can get started early and hopefully it's done in a timely manner. I know at Diplomat, we really strive to get that out, I mean, on the first day. I mean, initially, as soon as we get the prescription, we strive to get that out to the patient right away to make it as seamless as possible. We have a team that's dedicated specifically to Revlimid, and that's all they do. So, do I call the pharmacy first or the doctor's office first to start the process? I would call the pharmacy first. The pharmacy can then request the medication from the doctor. Sir, you have questions? Okay, so some tips for home chemotherapy use. These are just general tips for anybody who might have chemotherapy medications at home. I found this particular quote on a website called caregiver.com, which is actually pretty good. Um, so, traces of chemotherapy drug can be found in or on toilets, in disposable diapers, or on any clothing laundry that a person might have soiled after having a chemotherapy treatment. So, the, what's going on here is anything that goes in your body is going to come out. Urine, feces, emesis, really, it's, it's going to come out. It's going to be all full of medication and kind of toxic. Um, so, what you want to do is always wear gloves when handling chemotherapy medication. Now, this includes oral medications. So, when you're handling your tablets and capsules at home, you really should be wearing gloves. If your family member is helping you with these things, they really should be wearing gloves. They shouldn't be touching the medication directly. After using the toilet, always close the lid and flush twice. And again, this is because the residue can, from the urine it can stay in the toilet and it's better just to flush it out as much as possible. Always wash your hands with soap and water. Soiled laundry should be washed immediately and separately from other items. If it cannot be washed right away, keep it in a sealed plastic bag until it can be washed. So I know that's kind of weird to say, but they do make these really cool giant size Ziploc bags now that you can get at the Target or the Walmart. And it's a good place to just throw everything until you can get it into the washer. And when you do wash these kinds of soiled items, then you want to make sure you run them through the wash cycle twice also. And again, separate from everything else. Caregivers should wear two pairs of gloves when handling any item that is used to collect bodily fluids. Bed pants or anything to clean up on it. Again, two pairs of gloves just to make sure they don't get it on their skin. If you come in contact, if your skin comes in contact with either chemotherapy or a chemotherapy related fluid, really the ideal thing is to wash it right away. Wash it three times with soap and water and just keep an eye on it. If a rash develops or any redness and it lasts more than an hour, then it really should be seen by a doctor. Question? Okay. Yes? Actually, you mentioned that you have to I think, honestly, any, any rash that you get with Revlimid, when you go to visit your doctor for a follow-up, you should have a look at it on a regular basis and just make sure that it's just a side effect as opposed to something more serious. 
Um, again, if it's something that's extremely uncomfortable and there's not really any relief for it, I would make an appointment and see the doctor a little sooner. Okay, make sure you have chemotherapy spill kit. Use it if there are any spills in the home. This is more for home infusion. If you're doing a home IV therapy, um, your home infusion pharmacy should be providing you with a spill kit and directions on how to use it. And this is just in case something goes wrong, you the file knocks over and it breaks and there's chemotherapy all over your floor, there should be a, a safe way to pick that up. Um, so make sure if you're having home infusion treatments that you have a spill kit at home and you know, know exactly how to use it and how to dispose of the, of the spill if it occurs. If there's any, again, if there's any direct contact with the chemotherapy medication, you want to make sure you wash it off and you want to make sure you keep an eye on it and any rashes that develop need to be seen by a doctor. So properly disposing of items used to administer chemotherapy. You want to make sure you keep them in a separate trash bin that's labeled, this is just the, the chemotherapy trash, and make sure you keep it separate from your regular trash. Um, ideally, you want to contact your local authority and find out what's the best way to dispose of it. This is a little harder to do sometimes. I know I've been trying to figure out what to do in Riverside County for that and haven't been able to get a definitive answer yet. But, but ideally, you want to keep it separate from the regular trash and send, take it to a location where you know that it'll be disposed properly. Um, now, something that people don't think about, but your empty bottles for your oral medications should also go in this separate chemotherapy trash. It should not go in the regular trash with other things. So again, keeping things separate, sealing up the bag, finding the proper way of disposing it. Okay, so we're going to stop for a minute. Did anybody have any questions on any of that? All right, so we'll move on to the timing of your doses. And um, again, this is where I get to talk to you guys about making sure you take your medications on time <laughs> and don't skip any doses. Um, so for FDA-approved medications, doses are timed based on blood studies. When they're doing the initial research on some of these medications, they measure how the drugs stay in your body for how long, on what level, what level is an effective level that's going to be good, you know, it's going to allow you to have beneficial treatment. So if you take it, if you miss a dose, your drug level will drop, and this means that the medication may not work as well. You can develop drug resistance. It just it doesn't help you the situation at all. This is why we're always so worried about missing doses and, and getting you your medication on time. Doubling a dose, and this includes sometimes just taking a dose too soon. Oh, I missed my dose last night. I'm going to take two of them today. This can also lead to problems. You can elevate the level of drug in your blood way too high. It'll cause you more and worse side effects. And also, it taxes your organs that help you process medication, which is your liver and your kidneys. So if you, know, if you just dump a bucket full of medication on your organs, and now all of a sudden they have to deal with it, this, this can be a problem. Eventually, in the long run, it'll cause you problems. So again, we prefer that you take the medications as directed. Um, and the directions are, are there based on all the research that's been done with that particular medication. So, some helpful ideas on how to keep on track. Of course, pill boxes. Everybody knows pill boxes. These are always fun because you just have to, every Sunday, line up your pills for the whole week. Um, this particular picture right here is something that we do at Diplomat where we individually package them in rows and it'll say Monday through Friday. It's almost kind of like a self-contained pill box and you just punch out the pill every day. So that's, that's always helpful because it helps you keep on track. Um, alarms are very helpful, especially now that everybody has alarms on their phones. It's really easy to just set that alarm on your phone and you know every day at 10 o'clock it reminds you to take your revelment or whatever. And calendars. Calendars, I think, are a lifesaver. I really do. I, I love calendars. I'm a big fan of calendars especially with oncology medications, because the cycles are so weird. Take this medication for two weeks on, one week off. Take this medication for one week on, one week off. And they never really line up. They're kind of overlapping and in the weird stages. So it's always so helpful to have a calendar where you can just mark off, these days I'm taking relevant, these days I'm taking something else. You know, it just makes life a whole lot easier, and then you don't lose track where you're at. Yes? 
Exactly, yes. You can even mark the day that it's time to call the pharmacy to, call, to make sure you have your refill. And again, you can give that seven day window so that we don't run into problems. That is definitely another plus. And so this is just my going away thought for the day, is just always ask your pharmacist, be in constant communication with your pharmacist. We are only a phone call away. We are so easy to get hold of, and we are chock full of fun little tidbits and fun little pieces of information, and we can be very helpful. We like to be helpful. It's kind of why we got into the business in the first place. So always, always, always call your pharmacist. Yes. I had a question on the revenant, the outer layer of the capsules. Isn't that food? Uh, what is that made out of? And would that chemotherapy come on the outside of that capsule when you touch it? Again, yeah, that's why we recommend to wear gloves when you're handling them. Yes, they that can happen. Um, capsules can also sort of leak a little bit of powder from time to time. Usually capsules are made of some kind of gelatin. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they can be a little bit porous. So yes, the, the recommendation is wear gloves when you're handling those. And should the uh, revenant be taken separate? Like I have a habit of taking a bunch of pills and throwing them in the mouth and swallow. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or With revelment, there's not a particular recommendation. You don't necessarily have to separate it from your other medications. That's not, yeah, you can do it that way. That's fine. <laughs> Freaks are out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Um, the importance of from a pharmacist's perspective of letting your pharmacist, as well as your doctor, know what other drugs you're taking, meaning supplements or vitamins, how important is that? Yes, very, yes. Um, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Again, the side effects that can come from vitamins, sometimes, you know, they can mask side effects that you're having from your medication or vice versa. You may have a side effect from your vitamin that you don't know is from your vitamin and you think it's from your medication. Uh, Velcade, for instance. Velcade will cause peripheral neuropathy or tingling in the fingers and nerve issues. Um, if you take too much vitamin B, this will cause the same symptoms. So if you're taking a ton of vitamin B and your doctor doesn't know you're taking that and you're taking Velcade, he's going to take you off the Velcade. And then you're losing a therapy option when really the only issue was the vitamin B that he didn't know you were taking. So it, it becomes supremely important to make sure that we're all aware of everything that you are on. How about like Centrum by multivitamin? Is there no. any effects for No, those I wouldn't worry about. The multivitamins tend to have very, you know, lowish doses compared to some of the mega doses that you get from taking a vitamin alone. <coughs> the multi well, the one a day multivitamin is really not an issue that we're concerned with. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lead to other cancers, et cetera, et cetera, because we're, we're wanting to see how this works first. It's kind of, you don't want to just throw everything at it at once because you could be causing more problems down the line. You never know. This could be your fix for now and you won't need anything for a little while. So at this point, it's just a cautious optimism, really, and just making sure that we're not causing any further problems later on down the line. Where's the, where, I, I just have read or whatever, for whatever That would be for people who haven't reached complete remission. Okay. So it's, it is, it would not be called for in my case. No. Not, at least not yet. Okay. Yeah, you know, later on, it, it, you know, things change and the doctor feels it's necessary because he's coming back, so to speak. Then, yeah, he might put you on that moment, but at this point, it wouldn't be necessary yet. Yes. I was reading that 
on Revlimid. I was kind of confused. Is Revlimid more a, a new drug or is it more a chemotherapy drug? It's actually, well, it's been used for different kinds of anemias before, but it's actually, oh gosh, I don't know how to explain it. The way it works, uh, it keeps the myeloma cells from binding to bone tissue. It also helps to prevent tumors from growing blood vessels that feed it, so to speak. Um, so in that respect, really it's more of a chemotherapy medication. It just also works really well for different kinds of anemias for some reason. I think it has a lot to do with the biochemistry of cell receptors and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Revlimid is an analog of thalidomide, which right. thalidomide, of course, was used in the 50s and early 60s as a morning sickness drug uh, for pregnant women. And then, of course, they found out later that it caused uh, gross birth defects. Uh, and the, the ladies, the women who had uh, the kids. So that's why you have to fill out that form every yeah, time. <laughs> you know, in terms, you, you know what it's all about to make sure that you know that that cannot that cannot happen. Pomalidomide, same way. It's a chemo drug. It's an analog of the lidomide. You know, it's just changed. It's changed. So that's you know, the best I can explain. Sorry. <clears throat> Any other questions? Well, that's it for me. Um, if nobody else has any other questions, I think we could take a little break. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I appreciate it.